Who would have said I would be standing here and preaching again and giving a sermon? Probably you heard this. I received four blows to the head, the back of the head, four. I pray for that young man. I love him from the bottom of my heart. He's my son, will always be my son. That will never change. And I hope to see him one day because I want to kiss that hand that stabbed me. You see, the Lord is love. The Lord is good. You know, this kind of a talking, and it's not just talk, I mean it. I see, I can't lie to the Lord. I can lie to you, but I can't lie to him. I can't. So the Lord knows it's coming from the bottom of my heart. I have nothing in my heart but love for this young man and those who are like this young man. I pray for their conversion. I pray they see the light and they come to the truth. And if they don't, I wish them all the best. And if they ask for my life, I'll give it to them. I'll give it. Even though I've been going through hell the last six weeks. Unbearable hell. The only one that knows what I've been through is the Lord. It's a hell that I wish it for no one. For no one. Whoever that person is, even if that person is the one who afflicted the greatest harm upon me, I will never wish that hell for them because I can show you the split second in it, it's like eternity. You're dying, but you're not dying. So it's, this is not a human doing as a human there is no way in the world I can forgive I can love the one who tried to kill me it's Jesus Christ we need to open our ears our eyes our minds our hearts our souls our whole being it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth please see stop being blind it's not me it's the Lord it's the Lord it's the Lord. It's the Lord. But in these six weeks, He never left me. Even though it was unbearable hell. And the reason being, He never left me because I'm standing here now and talking to you. It's the Lord. He made sure I know this 100% clean. No one could have helped me. I was surrounded by wonderful people. I was surrounded by so many prayers and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know you prayed and I know some people even fasted. Little children, angels, all prayed from all over the world. God bless you. I can never pay you back, but I pray the Lord reward you abundantly here on earth. And after a very long and a blessed life here, in the next life, He rewards you much more greater. Received endless letters, emails, messages, phone calls, postcards, flowers, millions of people worldwide, Christians, non-Christians, and more so, our beloved Muslims prayed for me. I love everyone. God bless them all. Even the atheist prayed for me. I don't know how, but he prayed for me. But they prayed 
This is the miracle of Christ. This is what Christ is trying to teach us all. Love. St. Paul calls it the great mystery. What is the great mystery? Love. Why is love the great mystery, St. Paul? Because he says, the Lord Jesus revealed to me through the Holy Spirit that he has united us to him. We became one in him. Now this is the great mystery. How can I, the piece of dust, become united to the infinite God? How can this minute piece of wreck becomes the child, the son of God? And God becomes my dad, my daddy. Now this is love. And it is the great mystery. All you need to do, just take it. Don't try to understand it because you never will. Just embrace it and enjoy it. Those four blows to the head, they were fatal 100%. The knife did not open, it closed on this young man's fingers. And even I think it cut it. But I must say it was good, not bad. It gave me, he said, oh, didn't open. I'm gonna give you two more in the neck. Well, the first one was in the eye four in the head that never the knife never opened and then he opened it and gave me two in the neck one shallow the other one deep was very close to the main artery now that would have been fatal missed I don't know why whatever the Lord wants whatever the Lord wants You could say I came back from the dead because I was in the land of the dead and I came back. It was hell. That's the land of the dead. Maybe just to give this testimony that Jesus Christ is real. You better believe that. You better believe. six foot one when he was on earth six foot one long face tan skin Jewish Mediterranean from the tribe of Judah he had a brown crispy hair split in the middle all the way to the shoulders a very short beard brownish 33 years of age after 2024 years he will never age you go now and see him, he's still young. And he'll always be young. And when you see this man, you're not going to say, who is this man? You're going to say, who is this mighty God? That's the first impression you will see when you see the man. The Lord will remind you of this word in the next life. He'll say, you remember that old kind of a piece of wreck talking to you? Hey, he was right because it wasn't him talking it was me through him when you see this man you say oh what a mighty God but I'm seeing a man but I'm saying he's God because when you see him he hits you so hard deep so deep in the depths of your soul he penetrates places you have never experienced, never realized. And he will wake you up and he'll say, what a mighty God this is. That's the truth. And this was the whole message. This piece of wreck was yelling all these years. It was a message of love, not offense. I'm not the judge, God is. Everyone is free to choose in what to believe and in what not to believe. And we need to respect that. 
because I'm not the judge. I cannot say a non-Christian cannot go to heaven, but I can say with confidence, no one gets to heaven without Christ. He's the only way to heaven.